that shoulder plane is a swing fault that is very common to golfers and it causes all sorts of different problems in the swing in terms of the transition from back to down and being able to deliver the club back onto the ball. So in this video we're going to talk about what shoulder plane is and why having flat shoulder plane can be detrimental to your swing. And we're also going to talk about why it happens and most importantly how you can fix it. So let's start off with what flat shoulder plane is. And what it's when we're talking about flat shoulder plane, what we're talking about is the inability to turn around spine. And let's break it down. What does that actually mean? Well, when we build our stance, we're going to set our spine at a certain angle, depending a little bit on the shot that we're about to hit. And then the goal is, how can we rotate around that spine without, without allowing it to change its angle? In a different video, we've talked about reverse spine angle and the tendency for this to come off towards the ball. But it could also be in other directions, whether we're standing up or moving, all sorts of things. Now, if we look at great ball strikers, what we see is when they turn, their left shoulder will drop down as their right shoulder comes up. And then on the way down, their right shoulder drops down as their left shoulder comes up. And that's the ability to turn around the spine. And when we do that, we see that our shoulders are not flat. The right is higher than the left for a right-handed player. But for many of us, it's really common to take our backswing this way, where our shoulders remain flat. And this is where we run into a lot of problems, because now we need to compensate to be able to get the club back onto the ball the way that we're trying to. So now that we know what it is, we need to understand why it happens. And there's two main things going on here. The first is tight shoulders. Because our shoulders, ball and socket joint, are meant to be very mobile. We should be able to externally and internally rotate flex and extend, abduct and adduct, and everything in between. And if our shoulders can't do those motions or transition from one to another smoothly, it's going to cause compensations, whether it's a flying elbow, the flat shoulder, all these things start to come from the shoulders being too tight. So it's really important that we understand how to fix those tight shoulders. And when it comes to flat shoulder plane, we're going to start by warming up the shoulders with an exercise called a pass-through. This is something you can use a club, you can use a speed stick, you can use a power band. We'll get into that in a little bit. We're going to warm them up so that we can start to own that shoulder mobility through IE presses, getting that internal and external rotation of the shoulder really fired up. And then to improve overall range of motion, we're going to do some shoulder rack openers. But this is only half the problem, because again, this is tight shoulders, but it's only half of it. It'd be great if you know we don't actually rotate in our swing, but because we turn, the other part is thoracic rotation. And by addressing both these issues, the shoulders and the rotation, we can now get our shoulders onto the right plane while making a big turn. And this is going to be really important for creating sustainable power while reducing that chance of injury. And the way that we're going to tackle our thoracic rotation when it comes to our shoulders is similar to how we've done thoracic rotation in the past and other protocols. We're going to start off with a cat cow because we really need to get the spine to flex and extend back and forth to, we'll call it lubricate it or warm it up because we need to get that going before we can get into the rotation piece. Because remember, if your spine is already flexed, it won't rotate. So we have to open it to be able to get to the rotation. Once we get to the rotation, then we can improve our range of motion. We're gonna do that through two techniques. The first one is a twist and tilt and the other is a crescent stretch. Now both of these are designed to improve your thoracic mobility 
by incorporating breathing, along with a lot of the other things we do. Breathing is super important here because we're going to use that breath of expanding our torso to actually create more mobility, which is really exciting. And so we're going to hit the thorax through all different areas, forward and backwards, side to side, rotation. It's going to happen through this little protocol. And when you combine that with what we're doing to address the tight shoulders, all of a sudden your tendency to default to a flat shoulder plane begins to go away. One of my favorite ways to improve my shoulder mobility or warm them up before a round is doing something called a pass through. And you can do a pass through in many different ways using either a golf club or something like a power band. But what it is so simple about it is that we all have a driver. Now let me show you how we do a pass through and then I'll show you a variation of the pass through called an egg beater in case you can't do the pass through. Well, what a pass through is, is we're gonna put both hands on the outside of the club as wide as we can go and then keeping our arms straight, we're gonna go all the way forward and backward till the club shaft touches our front side and our back side. And we just keep going as many times as we need to to feel warm. And over time, we're gonna scoot our hands a little bit closer together. So a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and eventually you're gonna get to a point where you can't go any closer and that's perfectly fine. But some of you may find that you can't even do it as wide as possible. And that's where an egg beater comes in. An egg beater is simply working one side at a time. So I'm gonna keep, for example, my right arm straight as I go forward and backward. And you'll notice my left arm is bent and it's just providing some, some slack and control of the club. If I wanna make it harder, I can pull more with my left arm. If I wanna make it easier, then my left arm comes more toward my body. And then I can switch sides now my left arm is straight, my right arm is bent, and as my shoulders start to warm up, I can go one into another and backwards, and then finally into the pass-through that we started with, okay? The key is to not ever force it, but just spend enough time getting your shoulders warm until they can do what you're trying to get them to do. The other way that I like doing this is through something that's like a power band. And the power band is great because you can do the exact same thing that we were just talking about, except now you're always providing a little tension. You're always pulling the band a little bit apart. And this is really great for getting your shoulders to open because it's a little bit more active. And while you can do the same thing with your club by pulling it apart a little bit, nothing's going to be quite as good as the power band. But pass-throughs are by far one of my favorite ways to get the shoulders warm before you play, before you work out, and to improve your range of motion. One of my favorite shoulder mobilizations is also the simplest. What we're gonna do is take our arm, stick it behind our back as far up as we can. Don't force it with your palm away from you. Once it's there, keeping your core braced, you're gonna press your entire arm through your body and start to feel your shoulder kind of tingle. We inhale, three, two, one. As you exhale, relax and we switch so that now your arm is up top palm is now against your body get your hand as low as you can go without forcing it and then again we're gonna push through our body we're gonna breathe in three two one exhale and relax and then repeat back and forth as many times as you need to until you can feel that change in your shoulder and then go ahead and work the other side if you're having trouble in your swing because you have a flying elbow or you have a tendency to come over the top, then chances are you might need a little bit more of what we call shoulder external rotation. And a great way to get there is to grab your wedge, hold it on the rubber side, flip it over your shoulder, grab the shaft as high up by your armpit as you can, and then you pull your shoulder into external rotation as far as you can. Don't force it, okay? Because here's the magic to it is you're gonna pull the shaft up, you're gonna wind your shoulder up into what's called end range, where it just can't go any farther, and that's different for everybody. And then while you're in that position, you're gonna contract and squeeze your shoulder, almost like you're trying to bend this club over your shoulder, but of course, don't bend it. And if you're doing this, do not do it with your hand all the way down here and be too aggressive, because that could snap the shaft. Now, that being said, you could do it with something like a wooden dowel, but if you're watching this right now, chances are good that you have a golf club. Okay, now over time, as you 
contract and open the shoulder up, you want to get your elbow down and flat into this kind of a position and just continue to work and work and work over time contract squeeze breathe three two one let it go and then repeat by going a little bit farther and then go ahead and do the same thing on the other side creating a powerful golf swing while protecting your back means that you need to be able to bend and twist and a great exercise to help you do that is a cat cow so let's get on to our hands and knees with our hands underneath our shoulders and our knees underneath our hips. We're going to arch our back as we look up and inhale. And as we exhale, we're going to tuck our chin, round our back, tuck our hips, and look down. So we're going to go back and forth, timing this movement with our breathing until we can notice some significant difference in the way that we can bend and twist, as well as our posture when we're standing up or standing over the ball. Grab a little seat because we're going to talk about a really simple way to improve your shoulder turn. And by shoulder turn, we mean how far you can rotate. And we're going to do something called a twist and sell to help improve how far you can rotate. And what we're going to do is we're going to sit on something that's comfortable and firm that doesn't pivot, where our feet can ideally be flat to the ground. Now we're going to take our knees, bring them together, and then cross your right foot over your left foot. Try really hard to keep those knees together because it makes the stretch that more effective. Now sit up really tall. And take fingers, interlace them together, and stick it behind your head. Now, for some of you, holding this position, knees together, hands behind your head, that might be enough, in which case you're just going to spend time breathing deeply. But for those of you that can do some more, what we're going to do is because your right foot is the one that's on top, is we're going to turn your whole upper body to the right as far as you can. You get as far as you can go, and then tilt your right shoulder down. At this point, your knees are probably going to want to come apart. Force them to stay together. I promise it'll be worth it. So we twist and we tilt. From here, we're going to take a deep breath in. We're going to hold that breath. And as we hold that breath, you're going to push your knees together as hard as you can. You're going to squeeze your fingers. And you're going to pull your hands apart. So squeeze all of that for three, two, one. And then exhale and turn farther into your twist. Go back and forth, switching your legs each time, as many times as you need to, until you feel like you've improved that rotation. If we look at great players, as they move through impacts, they clear their hips out of the way, and then turn through that shot, creating a lot of bend through the body. And for a lot of us, that bend is a hard thing to do. So let's learn a simple stretch called a crescent stretch that's going to help you improve that side bend. What we're going to do is we're going to get onto the floor, hands and knees, and we're going to bring our knees together, feet together, and sit back, okay? Before we do, we're going to get and walk as far as we can to the side. In this case, I'm walking to my right. Now, I'm going to sit back, just like we did before, except now my hands and my arms are reaching away. As far as I can, I'm still trying to sit back. And I'm gently pushing my hands down into the ground and I'm breathing. Feeling the stretch all through the side of my body. <sighs> Exhale, come back, switch sides. This time we'll walk to the left. Okay, walk as far as I can. Then I sit back, arms stay. They could even reach. They press down, they reach forward. I drop the head, I breathe. Hold it. Three, two, one. And we go back and forth and back and forth, and you're going to feel everything start to open up and really free in your upper body. If you found any of this information helpful, please go to tourshotgolf.com to check out and learn more. And then check me out on the social media at Facebook. Come into my free Facebook group, the Mobilitas Movers. Or check me out on Instagram or YouTube, both at Tourshotgolf. Move better play better.